First up is Count Dracula. As we covered briefly last time, Dracula was created by author Bram Stoker in his 1897 gothic novel Dracula. The character was loosely based on Vlad the Impala, the notoriously brutal 15th century ruler of Wallachia. In Stoker's book, Dracula is portrayed as a charming but evil vampire living in a decaying castle in the Carpathian Mountains. Some key traits established in the original novel include Dracula's ability to shapeshift, control animals, and turn into a fine mist. He has superhuman strength and speed, but also weaknesses like sunlight, religious symbols, and wooden stakes. Dracula became the quintessential vampire character, representing a blend of aristocratic charm and primitive horror. He embodies the sensual yet dangerous appeal of the vampire myth. Dracula is a predator who can lure in victims with his hypnotic gaze and silver tongue. Beyond the original novel, Dracula's powers and weaknesses have been interpreted in many different ways across films, television, comics, and more. He's been depicted as everything from a romantic anti-hero to a total primordial monster. Some common powers granted to Dracula include immortality, telepathy, mind control, telekinesis, shakeshifting beyond just a bat, and even weather manipulation. His command over animals has ranged from controlling wolves or rats to summoning swarms of creatures to do his bidding. Dracula's weaknesses have also varied over time. Some versions are immune to religious artifacts like crosses and holy water. But Dracula is almost always vulnerable to sunlight, which burns and eventually disintegrates him. Wooden stakes are also widely accepted as being able to stop his regeneration and kill him. And Dracula, of course, needs to drink blood to maintain his vitality and powers. So, Dracula is often depicted as an aristocratic immortal with an array of magical powers coupled with key supernatural weaknesses. His physical abilities allow him to overpower humans and animals easily, and his hypnotic allure gives him the ability to manipulate people and seduce his prey. Modern accounts of werewolves emerged in the 18th and 19th centuries, including horrific tales of feral wolves. These established the werewolf's savagery and uncontrollable aggression during transformation under the full moon. Like Dracula, the werewolf's traits and abilities have been adapted in many ways over the years. Typical werewolf lore gives them heightened strength, speed, senses, and rage in wolf form. They are difficult to injure or kill with conventional weapons. In many stories, a werewolf bite can spread the werewolf curse and turn victims into werewolves themselves. Silver weapons are the most common werewolf weakness in pop culture. The beast is supposedly hurt or killed if struck with silver bullets or blades. Wolfsbane is another traditional bane of werewolves across various folklore. Werewolves are only transformed during the full moon, leaving them as vulnerable as humans otherwise. Unlike vampires, werewolves seem far less susceptible to religious artifacts like crosses or holy water, and sunlight does not have any particular effect on them. In almost all cases, the transformed werewolf has no control over its actions, driven by pure animal rage to kill. So, in summary, the werewolf is a rampaging tank that trades intelligence for raw primal power under the full moon. Armed with claw and fang, it is an apex predator well-equipped to rip enemies apart limb from limb. However, Dracula's intelligence and unnatural powers give him a real shot at devising a winning strategy. He will no doubt inflict some grievous wounds on the werewolf even in defeat. I don't think it would be an easy victory for the werewolf by any means. In the end, this pairing produces an awesome dynamic, brains versus brawn, aristocrat versus wild beast, immortal magician versus raw primal fury. The cunning and preparation of Dracula make for an exciting contrast with the werewolf's savage instinct. And there are so many ways the tides could turn based on the exact adaptations of vampire and werewolf lore. But in a straightforward physical brawl, I think the werewolf has the edge more times than not once it closes into melee range. So, the savage fury and physical power of the werewolf should ultimately overwhelm Dracula in most cases unless the vampire can exploit very specific weaknesses. But Dracula's vast array of supernatural powers could shift the tide in his favor if leveraged creatively. It would be very close either way. And if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more fictional character battles. Thanks again for watching everyone.